Hello, and welcome back to Educator.com and this series on AP Computer Science. The topic of today's lesson is input, output, and errors. In today's lesson, we'll first talk about getting input from the user. We'll talk about providing output to the user. We'll then talk about special characters, how we can use escape sequences to print special characters that we would not otherwise be able to print within a quoted string. And then finally we'll talk about error handling and exceptions which is really the art of dealing with the unexpected. So let's jump right in. Getting input from the user. There are many methods of obtaining user input and these tend to be platform dependent. For the AP questions, the College Board did not want to have platform dependent questions where your answer might be different depending on what Java system you're using or what type of computer platform you're using. So what they will do on questions that require user input, they will show one of two things. They will either show a variable and they'll tell you the the type and name of the variable equals and then they'll have some kind of comment like this call to a method that reads a floating point number and you should just assume that some method is going to be called on this line and the result of running that line will be that a floating point number entered by the user has been stored in this double called x or they'll give you something like this, double x equals, and then a comment, read user input. And these should be treated as equivalent to one another. Don't concern yourself with how the user actually would provide that input. Simply know that when this line finishes executing, this variable will contain a value that was obtained from user input. So specific methods to read the input are not in the AP subset. Also, converting strings to numeric values are not in the AP subset. There is a way that you can read in a string and parse it into different values, but that is not something that you're expected to know for the AP test. So if they want a double, they will explicitly tell you that we're going to read in a double. If they want an int, we'll read in an int or a string or whatever the type is. They would not expect you to convert that. Now that being said, I do want to show you one method of getting input from the user because it, you can do a lot more with your programs and uh, it's just a, a useful technique to know how to get input from the user and I'll be using this in some of the examples in the class so that I can I can provide input to the programs that I demonstrate and so I want to explain how this is going to work. There's a class called Scanner that was introduced in Java 5.0. So if you're using a current version of Java that's going to be greater than or equal to version 5.0 then um, you'll have this class available to you and it simplifies console and file input. What we do is we import the library called java.util.scanner and then we declare a scanner and we give it a name and we create a new scanner and we pass system.in to the constructor for the scanner class. Then we can use this sc to read input from the user. So we read a string with the next line method of the scanner and we, we store that into a string variable. We can read an int with the next int method and store that into an int variable. We can read a double with the next double method that has to be stored in a double and we can even read a boolean. There's a next boolean method and that gets stored into a boolean variable. So I'll demonstrate all of these in just a minute here, but I first want to talk about providing output to the user. Then I'll demonstrate both input and output at the same time. Just as there are many methods of obtaining input from the user, there are also many methods of producing output. And once again, the uh, College Board, the people that produce the AP tests, 
did not want to have any kind of platform dependencies on test questions. So the only two methods of producing output that are included in the AP subset are available universally on all Java systems on all platforms. And these are system.out.print and system.out.println. Print will print whatever is passed to it in parentheses and then the next output would continue right there on the same line. Print line will print what's passed to it in parentheses and then advance the cursor down to the beginning of the next line so that the next output would begin on the next line. That's the only difference between the print and the print line methods. So here's an example, printing two strings on the same line. String one is hello and string two is world. And if we call print on hello and then print line on world, the output would the output of S2 would continue where the output of S1 left off because we use print, not print line. So it would print hello, comma, space, world, exclamation point, all on the same line. We can print two or more values together by combining them into one string with the plus operator and passing that to the print or print line method. So we'd say the number is plus i, and then that would print the number is 100, because we've assigned 100 to i on the previous line. If we want to print a blank line, then you can simply call system.out.println with nothing in the parentheses, and that will print nothing except a blank line. So for formatting output, maybe we want to have a blank space in between some groups of output, this would be how to do that.